The A380 was initially conceived back in the 90s when hub-to-hub -hub travel looked to be gaining prominence, able to carry up to 853 passengers if configured in all economy. The plane offered attractive economics to airlines looking to maximize limited slots at busy airports. Roomy interiors and a novelty of engineering also made it particularly popular with passengers. The first A380 aircraft was delivered to Singapore Airlines in 2007, and there have been 14 customers for the double-decker Super Jumbo. Emirates is the biggest operator, having taken delivery of just under half of the 251 Super Jumbos built. However, as the aircraft came to market, an industry shift towards lower-capacity direct routes, coupled with the aircraft's expensive running costs, meant it quickly fell out of favor. In February 2019, Airbus began to wind down production of the aircraft, and Emirates took delivery of the final A380 in December 2021. The COVID-19 pandemic and subsequent global travel slowdown led many A380 operators to either place their super jumbos in storage or retire them completely. It looked like that was it for the giant aircraft. However, as demand for flights rebounds after the pandemic at the same time as delivery delays of new aircraft, airlines are starting to take another look at the A380, and existing fleets are gradually coming back into service. The Airbus A380 is a large, wide-body airliner that was developed and produced by Airbus. It is the world's largest passenger airliner and only full-length double-deck jet airliner. Airbus studies started in 1988, and the project was announced in 1990 to challenge the dominance of the Boeing 747 in the long-haul market. The then-designated A3XX project was presented in 1994. Airbus launched the $10.7 billion A380 program on 19th of December 2000. The first prototype was unveiled in Toulouse on the 18th of January 2005, with its first flight on the 27th of April 2005. It then obtained its type certificate from the European Aviation Safety Agency and the US Federal Aviation Administration on the 12th of December 2006. Due to difficulties with the electrical wiring, the initial production was delayed by two years and the development costs almost doubled. It was first delivered to Singapore Airlines on the 15th of October 2007 and ended service on the 25th of October. Production peaked at 30 per year in 2012 and 2014. However, after the largest customer, Emirates, reduced its last order in February 2019, Airbus announced that A380 production would end in 2021. On the 16th of December 2021, Emirates received its 123rd A380, which was the 251st and last delivered by Airbus. The $25 billion investment was not recouped. The full-length double-deck aircraft has a typical seating for 525 passengers, with a maximum certified capacity for 853 passengers. The quad jet is powered by Engine Alliance GP7200, or Rolls-Royce Trent 900 turbofans, providing a range of 9,200 miles. As of December 2021, the global A380 fleet had completed more than 800,000 flights over 7.3 million block hours, with no fatalities and no hull losses. As of 2016, the list price of an A380 was $432.6 million. Negotiated discounts made the actual prices much lower, and industry experts questioned whether the A380 project would ever pay for itself. The first aircraft was sold and leased back by Singapore Airlines in 2007 to Dr. Peters for $197 million. In 2016, IAG's Willie Walsh said he could add a few, but also that he found the price of the new aircraft outrageous and would source them from the second-hand market. Air Insight estimates its hourly cost at $26,000, or around $50 per seat hour, when configured for only 520 seats, which compares to $44 per seat hour for a Boeing 777 and a $90 per seat hour for a Boeing 747 as of November 2015. The A380 was designed with large wing and tail surfaces to accommodate a planned stretch. This resulted in a high empty weight per seat. The stretch never occurred to take advantage of this, and the A380's cost per seat is expected to be matched by the A350, 1000, and Boeing 7779. In total, 14 airlines have ordered the Airbus A380 since its official announcement on December 19, 2000, and have continued to do so following the announcement on February 14, 2019, that the manufacturer would be cancelling production of the aircraft. Out of the 14, including the 15th operator, High Fly Malta, which took over as an ex-Singapore Airlines airframe, eight are currently flying the double-decker. Additionally, Lufthansa and Etihad Airways have begun the process of restoring the type after several years in storage. Lufthansa already moved two Airbus A380s out of its long-term storage location at Turil Airport in Spain for maintenance checks. 
Abu Dhabi United Arab Emirates-based Etihad Airways flew a single Super Jumbo out of Tev on January 30, 2023. In total, Etihad plans to restore four aircraft of the type, while Lufthansa initially planned to restore three and, if there's enough demand, re-add five additional examples to its fleet in 2024. However, according to comments made by the German airline CEO Carsten Spohr, during the group's Q3 2022 results presentation, Lufthansa will need to bring that number up due to the demand we see and also for operational reasons. Three is not enough. Air France, China Southern Airlines, Malaysia Airways, and Thai Airways have either retired the aircraft completely or have not announced plans to restore them back to service. Previously, a Thai Airways executive indicated that the carrier was deliberating whether to bring back the type. Highfly's Maltese subsidiary ended its brief flirtation with the A380 in December 2020. China Southern Airlines' last two Super Jumbos flew to Victorville Southern California Logistics Airport, their permanent storage place, on December 21, 2022. As airlines bring back more A380s, one executive, who's been a long-standing advocate of the aircraft, warned that if airlines begin to phase out the Super Jumbo and the Boeing 747s, fares will rise. The executive was Emirates President Tim Clark, who spoke to Aerotime in November 2022. Clark warned that with all the four-engine aircraft gone from the skies while demand continues to skyrocket, and there are no such big aircraft anymore, capacity will fall, fares will rise. Perhaps it was a bit over-successful for Emirates, and there was a view among my airline community competitor friends that the fewer A380 there was in the toolbox of airlines like Emirates, the better, because it was outperforming so many of our competitors' operations," Clark continued. According to the executive, if infrastructure development at Dubai's airport was to develop as fast as Emirates wanted it to, then we would have 200 A380s flying. That scared the pants off everybody, Clark concluded. Yet the aircraft is not perfect. Clark also pointed out that the double-decker has engines that were designed in the 1990s for the 1990s and the early part of the last decade. Engine technology has come a long way, including the newest engines, such as the Airbus A350's Rolls-Royce Trent XWB or the Boeing 777X's GE9X. For example, the Trent XWB's bypass ratio is 9.6 to 1, while the Trent 900's, which powers the Airbus A380, is between 8.5 and 8.7 to 1. In layman's terms, the bigger the bypass ratio, the more fuel efficient the engine is. Fuel prices have always hindered the economics of the A380 as the more efficient twin-engine aircraft burned much less fuel, in part because they had fewer engines and no aircraft comes close to the Super Jumbo's weight. The Airbus A380's maximum zero fuel weight, the aircraft's weight without fuel and oil, it is pretty heavy, to say the least. The number varies between weight variants, namely between 361 tons, or 795,869 pounds, and 373 tons, or 822,324 pounds. The 7478i's maximum zero fuel weight is 295.2 tons, or 651,000 pounds, for example. And even if crude oil prices have significantly decreased since their peak of $120.61 in June 2022, they are still susceptible to price swings and political developments. One case could be the organization of the petroleum exporting countries deciding to drastically cut oil production, reducing oil supply globally even if demand continues to rise. But airlines have little choice in terms of how to prepare for the upcoming peak travel season. Airbus and Boeing are lagging behind delivery schedules, as the ongoing supply chain issues have hindered both, and only manufacturers of wide-body aircraft from delivering twin aisle jets on time. Even if airlines did want more large aircraft on the market, Airbus and or Boeing's hands are tied. Factory tooling of the A380 and B747 has been or is going to be replaced with the A321, Neo, and 737 MAX assembly lines, respectively. And yet, the love story between airlines and the A380 is likely to continue for years, even if airlines will be unable to officially renew their affection for the Super Jumbo. What do you think about the Airbus A380? Let us know in the comments down below, and remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. And as always, hit that notification bell to stay updated with our latest videos.